What does it take to unify a nation? Well, it is something that Italy has always been struggling to achieve. While being the most economically, politically, and socially advanced territory in the world by the 14th century, housing many free republics with elected governments that represented the interests of a growing urban, cosmopolitan, and uh, proto-capitalistic elite that would promote the rebirth of trade with the Orient, the flowering of the arts and the culture of humanism and the Renaissance, manufactories, banks, and universities, the Italian peninsula was never unified under a single political banner. To fully explain the causes for this would take absolutely hours, so to very quickly summarize. The very premature economic development of Italy was not followed by political projects for unification, and those more effective leaders that would try, more ambitious leaders like uh, Gian Galeazzo Visconti, would uh, not be able eventually to break the massively entrenched interests of other local and regional leaders, who would often form coalitions to preserve the balance of power. Uh, that is actually a term that originates in this period. In other countries, it was often the monarchy which spurred centralization, with the nobility in opposition to that, entrenching their local interests. To counterbalance this, the monarchs uh, often relied on the support of the nation's urban elites, who had an interest to break the power of the nobility politically and economically. And all the burdens of feudalism that came with it, such as the restrictions to interregional trade, the purchase of land, and the privileges of the church. National unification in this way meant the unification of the national market and later the global projection onto new markets with the discovery of the new world. In Italy there was no central monarch and the urban elite were more interested in keeping their established power bases that they already had rather than risk the competition of other groups in a unified market. Additionally, the Italian states ruled the Mediterranean trade which already brought in huge profits. Ironically, it was actually Italy's premature development that reduced the push for unification. To add insult to injury, the temporal power of the church in the Papal State meant that it felt threatened by any upstart regime and schemed to keep the status quo, often calling in foreign powers to its defense when it was threatened. Uh, it was actually by no means the only one to partake in this, and eventually foreign interventions turned to invasions. Italy was actually turned in this way into a battlefield for France, Spain, and the Habsburg realms to fight over, to the point where no unified Italian culture, language, and economy would emerge until 18, essentially 1861 with the unification of Italy. As the Austrian statesman uh, Metternich would point out, Italy had not to be a nation, but a geographical expression. Uh, so it only stands to reason that in Kaiserreich you can explode the peninsula. So, in Kaiserreich, you actually have different options uh, to divide up Italy, or as it has become known, to Italianize the peninsula. Now, uh, this happens when you annex the Socialist Republic of Italy, you destroy the Socialist Republic of Italy as, uh, as a country. Uh, right now, let's just see what happens with the Papal States. No, sorry, not the Papal States, the two Sicilies. So, you get this event called the Destiny of Italy, we now control a good part of North Italy, populated by our North Italian brethren. Now, this is uh, this is the event that's specific to the two Sicilies. I believe it might also happen with Rome, the Papal State. And you say it's not. You can either say this is our destiny to recreate the Italian unification, and then you turn into the Italian Empire because the two Sicilies is, of course, the state that's supposed to just oversee the south. We are faced with two, cho two choices concerning what to do with the north. You can also reform the Italian confederation. Now, this explodes Italy, as you can see. It's important to note that uh, the focus trees of the Italian miners reflect that uh, their status is that of puppets, it's that of puppets of some other power. So they're not meant to be uh, some crazy reconquest of everything. They're just, uh, well, not really tiny little things, but nice contained things that uh, sort of explain how there is a local buildup of resources in the framework of a big confederation. Uh, the, world, the borders that result from all of this are essentially a modified version of the Congress of Vienna borders, uh, except a little bit more condensed. For example, in the Congress of Vienna, there was uh, a split off between Parma and Modena. Uh, and then 
well, there was the Republic of Lucca down around here. You know, there, there was, well, it was actually a duchy. Uh, but yeah, it was a little bit more different. Overall, though, it is mostly the same. Uh, and to the northeast, the Italian Republic, of course, still exists. And you can add the Italian Republic in the uh, Confederation if you annex it. Let's have this. So you're going to get the fate of Italy, which is down here, part of the Two Sicilies focus tree. And once you take the Italian Republic out, you get another option. Come on, please give me that event. You get the option essentially to divide up. I'm not getting it for some reason, because I'm bugging out the game by using console commands, but you're supposed to have the option to release uh, both Milan and Venice, essentially divide up the Italian Republic. But for some reason I'm not getting that, which is pretty sad. Why? Seriously, come on, what the fuck? That's weird. I wonder if, um, if I can go back to here. Essentially, though, it's supposed to be the northeast. You know what? I actually might just... Uh... Okay, so the Italian Republic. Let's see. Wait, for what? Okay, hold on. Apparently, this is another save, but that's fine. Tag Sicily. And now annex the Italian Republic. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay, the destiny of Italy. So, having expanded our control over North Italy, we can continue to enlarge the confederation with new states to recreate, form the Italian Confederation. And that splits off the state of Lombardy and the states of Veneto and Friuli into the Duchy of Milan and the Serene Republic of Venice. For some reason, they have the wrong leader portrait, but that's fine. And of course, all of these miners, as you can see, have focus trees. Now, this one is another save, but that's fine. Uh, that is fine because uh, essentially the focus trees are the same. Okay, so Sardinia, I'm not going to cover it now, but uh, they go down the proclaimed Sardinia Piedmont line, which uh, essentially gives them more options uh, while they're contained to Sardinia Piedmont, which is. Uh, these two regions. This is Sardinia, this is Piedmont, and then they've also got Liguria, which is this one kind of thrown in there. And, uh, well, they do that. That's, uh, again, I might uh, cover it more in another time, but yeah, you can get some good stuff in there. Uh, with the Sicily, Sicily itself, again, not really my concern to really cover this one too much in this video, but you get to preserve the status quo and the old order and the confederate customs union. All these three focuses increase the power of the confederation by quite a lot because this adds free military factories to every state in the confederation. That is Sardinia, Milan, Venice, uh, Emilia, just gonna call it that, which is Modena or Parma. Uh, well, in this case it would be Modena. Uh, the Papal State, the Tuscany, and also I believe yourself should be yourself as well. Da -da -da. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, okay. So, also yourself. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times free uh, military factories. You can imagine how good this is. Of course, the problem is these are all like AI controlled and they all do their own thing and it's all decentralized, but hey, uh, that's a lot of factories. You also get a massive amount of manpower and political power to everyone there. So in theory, this is very, very strong actually by gameplay. I haven't actually tried to form it in game yet uh, and see how it goes essentially, but considering how the AI is, it's probably not very viable. Still though, you get some pretty nasty bonuses. Members of the Italian Confederation also receive a minus 50% consumer goods modifier, plus 10%, no, not 10%, plus 10 political power cost, and uh, plus 10% construction speed. Now, this is, of course, the Confederate Customs Union, which is a little bit like the Zollverein uh, from, the, from the German Confederation and the German Customs Union, which was eventually promoted by Prussia. 
this is because essentially uh, the Italian Confederation is a unified Italian project, which is well, re, I guess, <laughs> emerged in Kaiserreich. And if it's histor historically accurate, as I uh, like to always say, if it is historically accurate or supposed to be in any way similar to the historical project, it's supposed to have the Pope as nominal leader. Uh, because the proponents of this Italian confederation were generally a portion of uh, the people that were calling for the reunification of Italy in the 19th century. They looked in part to how the German Confederation was working, and, uh, well, they also looked to the Pope's leadership. These were mostly Federalists that were uh, more in line with the Catholic Church uh, and that kind of ideology. So they were also called sometimes the New Guelphists, Guelphists and the Guelphists are sort of complicated stuff. I'm not going to talk about it now. Uh, but they were supporters of the Pope during the Middle Ages. Uh, in these struggles between the little Italian states there. So the Pope is supposed to be like the nominal leader of this federation or confederation. Uh, and of course that is because of his like inherent authority or whatever over the entirety of Italy. Because it's like, I mean, yeah, the king of Naples, it's like, who, who, who the fuck does he think he is compared to the Pope, you know? The Pope is the leader of all Christians in the entire world. So that's essentially the thinking behind it. Still, though, uh, it is a confederation, and it is essentially just a puppet of whoever politically leads it. In this case, it is the Two Sicilies. But you can do this with other countries as well. Namely, well, we're going to check it out. Uh, we're going to check it out right now. So the Two Sicilies is one, and it is the one that eventually grants the confederation the most power due to all those buffs that you can give it, obviously. In the other case... You are uh, in some way relying. Okay, so for example, Austria, the obvious example. Uh, actually, no. Let's first do. Let's first do Germany. No, no. no let's do Austria because Austria actually has some unique things that happen due to it. Unique things. Everyone likes those. So thank you, guys, right team. All of that. So what happens if, as Austria, you defeat the Socialist Republic? Well, let's check it out. Yes, Austria. Okay. So you get the destiny of Italy. And we have now uh, we have now to decide what to do with Italy. We can't control these territories forever, and we might have to think about creating a puppet Italian state. So you can balkanize Italy and make the royal house come back to Piedmont, which is exactly the same thing as earlier. This uh, gives, uh, just like with the two Sicilies, it gives the uh, Sardinia gives Sardinia an option to either say, well, we're going to submit to whoever took out the SRI and we're going to get back Sardinia, Liguria, and Valle d'Aosta, uh, which is essentially to say they reclaim Sardinia Piedmont's borders. And that means that they can take, proclaim Sardinia Piedmont. In this role, they are going to be the ones to create the Italian Customs Union and Confederation Military Training because it is not the two Sicilies who restored the old order. Because technically it wasn't them, they can't take these focuses and they can't create these things, the status quo and the Confederate Customs Union. So it is actually Sardinia that is, I guess you could say, the native leader of the Confederation. And then you also get the question of the former Papal States, which, again, happens to every country except for the Two Sicilies. The two Sicilies automatically give these states, Romagna, Umbria Marche, Umbria, and uh, Viterbo, which are the historical lands of uh, the Papal State, back to the Pope, because, well, uh, the Papal State is the buddy-buddy of the Two Sicilies. They're already kind of like their puppet, so it is very natural. In this case, you can say, our recent annexation of Northern Italy has left us with remnants of land that, according to the Peace Treaty of 1919, should pertain to the Pope. We have thus the option of returning it to its rightful owner, either freely or conditioned to their submission. We can also simply continue the occupation of these lands. So give it freely to the Pope, we'll just give it. And uh, they'll be happy, but you know, they'll just be there. You can propose a deal, the land for submission, or you can continue the occupation. 
So they can they have a very very high chance of actually accepting the deal, just like Sardinia has a very high chance of uh, accepting the deal to retake Piedmont. So it's like very good, and they become your puppets. They're all occupied puppets, by the way. So it's like the lowest degree of puppethood. Um, wait, hold on. No, that's <laughs> that was Bohemia. <laughs> I was like, wait, why can I annex them? No, no, no. That is um, that is only Bohemia. So of course. Uh, you need to increase that autonomy level, or rather decrease that autonomy level if you're gonna want to annex them or whatever, or get additional things out of them. But still, uh, they can be useful, can be very, very useful. And uh, the only different option, oh, there's also one more thing, if you do this with Austria, that has to deal with the Italian Republic. It's not happening. Damn, the Italian Republic is being... Okay, no, 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 good. I was saying, it's being very buggy, but no, there it is. Establish the Italian Kingdom. So with the godless syndicalists and the Socialist Republic of Italy now destroyed, the question of what to do with the Republic of Italy has arisen. The threat of the Socialist Republic of Italy has always kept the alliance, and by the alliance I mean this guarantee uh, that the Italian Republic has from Austria. Uh, the Itali Because technically the Italian Republic has first risen up against Austria. Uh, da -da -da has always kept the alliance in check, and the Republic acted as a bulwark against the tide of syndicalism. Now that threat is gone, the question is whether we should send an ultimatum uh, to demand that the Republic become a kingdom, something that would be more acceptable to Vienna. Be Alternat alternatively, we could always drop the matter. Uh, so you can either send the ultimatum, which is gonna result in war, or drop the matter. We're gonna drop the matter and then annex them with the console, so just so that I can show you what ends up happening. The destiny of Italy. You can either say, give the territory to the Sardinians, and uh, then they become the owner and controller of. Uh, is it Lombardia or also Veneto and Friaul, which is Friuli? You can occupy, or you can uh, you can release Lombardia and the Serene Republic. So you can continue the Balkanization further, uh, which I will show later, or you can give the territory to the Sardinians, in which case, oh, okay, they get all of that, which is uh, a little bit too big, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, a good thing, in my opinion, would have been if uh, you have the option to restore the kingdom of the uh, Lombardo Veneto, as they called it, which is, uh, to say, Lombardia plus Veneto, these two regions, and then take Friaul. The kingdom of the Lombard, Lombardo Veneto was like a construct of the Austrians to keep control of this area, which was their territory all the way up to, uh, well, lay, uh, essentially after the French under Napoleon III decided to help Sardinia Piedmont in the Second War of Reunification. And, uh, well, that's like random Italian history for you. And it was essentially just a kingdom that had Milan as its capital. And included also Venice, and it was under the control of Austria. So it would be kind of nice to like have the ability to restore that as Austria. Although, I mean, it's technically what that Italian kingdom is supposed to be if you restore the Italian kingdom. Anyway, uh, we go back to the menu once again, and I'll show you the third outcome. So the balkanization can't be fully complete. So what ends up happening is that it's uh, like it's putting together states that sometimes shouldn't be there. Like, for example, Parma and Modena are supposed to be separate. So what happens is, if you're playing as a Bourbon monarchy, headed by a Bourbon ruling family, such as the Kingdom of Spain, or uh, if you restore the Bourbons to France, that as well. If you take out the SRI, you're gonna balkanize. Sardinia's gonna accept. That's oh. And as you can see, this this is what happens if the Pope refuses the deal. They just stay there as a little thing, and then you keep uh, you keep all of that land, and then you can re give it to them if you annex the Pope or whatever. Here, instead of uh, the Duchy of Modena, you get the Duchy of Parma, uh, which has a different flag, which looks retarded. <laughs> but uh, the difference is that uh, the Duchy of Modena is under a uh, is under a Habsburg. The Habsburg kind of kid. The, Habsburg, uh, the Duchy of Parma has uh, a Bourbon leader, Duke Elias, or Elia, and it's got the same folk stream. So going back to 
Let's actually go over to focus trees now. Uh, you've seen this already in like the progress supports or whatever. But hey, uh, just gonna show it a little bit longer. NX SRI. NX ITA. There we go. Okay. From an Italian confederation. And there we go. Okay, so we have formed the Italian confederation. Oh, now, now you actually have a different leader. Okay. Uh, so, this is what happens. Uh, you are in the south as the two Sicilies. Then there's the Pope, which, again, I'm not going to go over his focus tree because I'm going to do that one other time. What we're going to look at is the North Italian miners. So, starting off with Tuscany, which is probably the least interesting. They have got, at the start, a couple of um, focuses. Lingering syndicalist economic influences and syndicalist government influences. Uh, now, it's worth remembering that, essentially, this belt that goes from Turin to uh, Tuscany, running through Emilia and Liguria, is kind of like Italy's red belt, in a way. So, uh, there's just significant influence of left-wing politics everywhere here. And so, you have to root them out, and that's fine. Uh, one interesting thing is that you don't need to do this for Modena, which also has the same sort of characteristic, and you don't need to do it with Turin, which has even more, because it was the capital of the communes, but whatever. Uh, and then uh, for Tuscany, let's actually... what Tusc I'm going to tag over to Tuscany so that they can see if there's anything too particular. That's a cool flag and a half, by the way. I think it's really awesome. The parties, by the way, are different, all of them, uh, but uh, some of them are the same. For example, Italia Unita, the totalists, is actually... To, is actually like unique to everyone. Da, da, da. Let's see if I can find the total lists. Yeah, Italia Unita, which means United Italy. But yeah, uh, interestingly enough, the national populists are called Lega Etrusca, which is referencing the Etruscans, which is like a... Uh, well, it, it was a population that lived in this area-ish uh, before the Romans came and exterminated them, <laughs> essentially. And uh, yeah, the other ones... Senato dei 48 is referencing a, a sort of legislative organization of uh, Tuscany. Casa d'Asburgo Lorena is the house of Habsburg, uh, Le, Lefrangia. How do you even say it? Lorraine. Habsburg and Lorraine, who were, again, the rulers of uh, Tuscany. Like, all these little tiny duchies were initially ruled by mostly Habsburgs of different Habsburg branches. Then you have your own, like, Lega Cattolica, Partito Liberale, all of these are the same, essentially, everywhere. Uh, because, again, like, Catholic League, it's like, everyone has that. The ministers are uh, unique and all that, so, yeah, you can even research what these people were doing. Oh, Tuscany has no economy minister. You can even research what these people were doing, and it's kind of interesting, because uh, some of these guys are uh, pretty interesting people. There's also, of course companies for everyone, although uh, you don't have heavy equipment manufacturers. That's too bad. Um, you know, yeah, okay. So at least they do have the shipyards and all that. Like, for example, these uh, Livorno, which is this city. Oh, no, this city, right. Uh, very, very important port. So, of course, you have that. And, um, well, industrial company refineries, universities, Società Montecatini, the Montecatini Society, uh, which is based in Montecatini, which is a li like a tiny little town over here, famous for, well, this petrochemical company. Uh, oh, wow. Right, because petrochemicals technically don't exist in, uh, yeah, it should have, or, I mean, they've already got, they've already got, like, uh, the Livorno refinery, but this was a petrochemical company. And uh, it was very, very important uh, up until, well, the late 20th century. So, yeah, kind of interesting. And you've also got your own, like, uh, staff and all of that. So, Tuscany's, like, focus tree is all about, like, you know, Tuscany is awesome. So, are you going to have an industrial revolution and make Tuscany great again? Or make Tuscany rich again? Or are you going to have a cultural renaissance, a second renaissance, and make uh, Tuscany great again? So 
make Tuscany great again, it gives you more modifiers in terms of stability, in terms of political power, in terms of, uh, you know, modifiers just as a whole. Uh, whereas the other one, the modern renaissance, is going to give you better economy as a whole. Uh, to be honest, like the modern renaissance, as much as like the new renaissance sounds pretty awesome, the modern renaissance is probably a little bit better when it comes to the gameplay stuff. You can have uh, either... You can have either, of course, your uh, Grand Battle Plan Doctrine or your Superior Firepower Doctrine. It's all based on the fact that Tuscany isn't like... Uh, it's not as populated as some other areas of Italy like Piedmont and uh, Lombardy. But, you know, uh, they've got their own technical expertise and all that. And then you have some usual other stuff like the brave Tuscan Marines, I don't know. There's some hilarious things like... It, it just sounds so stupid as a whole, like the elite Tuscan army, but I just like that. Uh, then you have some options for, like, again, Air Force and Navy, just what you'd expect. The Grosseto Air Base is uh, pretty important. IRL as well. Launch from base. Jesus Christ. Uh, then you move up to uh, Modena, which has attack. Emi, uh, and it shares this tag with um, da -da -da, with the Parmensian <laughs> duchy or whatever you want to call it. Uh, they both share a tag Emi because of Emilia. It's the province name. So, uh, for this, you actually have some events that come up after some of these um, some of these focuses: the nascent military and the Apennine Guard. This is more. Um, like as uh, less culturally focused and more well i mean there's also some culture stuff uh, more economy and military focused because modena is the seat of the modena military academy which is the main well one of the main academies for the italian army uh, you know, an officer academy so you have a lot more military options here uh, you can get some pretty free manpower by raising an army at the beginning you don't really have that much manpower but you get like 10,000 or 20,000 men, I don't exa exactly remember, from this nascent military. And then you have the Guardia Apennina, which gives you some more manpower, and then some modifiers to your um, mountaineers. And some division defense on core territory from the modifier, the Apennini, which is misspelled. I mean, it might be trying to spell it in Emilian, actually. Hmm. Yeah, that, that might that might be the case. That might be the case. But if it is, if it is trying to spell Apennini, which is uh, the mountains that run through, from uh, is there a terrain map mode in this shitty game? States, diplomacy, factions, resource, resistance. Uh, right, because it's supposed to be integrated or whatever. Well, anyway. Um, Right, uh, it's a mountain range that runs essentially from here all the way down the coastline to here. So as you can see, it's kind of spines through the whole spines through the whole peninsula. It's pretty rugged, especially around this part is very very difficult to traverse and all that. This is referencing the fact that actually in uh, well the Second World War there was very very much uh, you know widespread partisan warfare throughout these areas because of course mountains easy to hide in or whatever uh, and it's part of the usual Kaiserreich kind of reverse irony I guess that they like to do because it's supposed to be like veterans of this resistance against uh, socialist tyranny have emerged from the rugged Emilian Hills you know um, and now that socialism is destroyed they're now you know they, they can be integrated in the army or whatever. It's kind of funny because a lot of these partisans were communists during World War II. So, whatever. Uh, that's the usual Kaiserreich reversal. And, uh, yeah, a lot of that is... Uh, a lot of the rest is giving you some good modifiers to your industry and your army. So, for example, you can even research jet technology. And, of course, you also have the Ferrari factories. Uh, you know, pretty famous Modenese uh, factory producing... Well, now luxury cars, but used to be pretty important as a whole. You can also have your own aircraft from it. And uh, love the icon, of course. The lovely ramp, rampant horse, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then the rest of the part is uh, partially about your uh, you know, economy or whatever. 
and some of that is supposed to be, you know, this region is very industrialized, so you get some great industrial modifiers, and you get some also good uh, scientific research modifiers. Of course, lots of good stuff for motorized, as again, you are uh, the land of the mortars, as sometimes it is called. You can try to avoid famine, which is, I guess, always a nice thing. And then uh, reestablish growth as a whole, uh, very, very focused on the countryside, of course. Then you also have uh, the ability to create a constitution and then reconstruct the Emilian identity and the Emilian language, which, uh, well, it does exist. It is not a joke. There are people that do speak Emilian or whatever, and it's uh, incomprehensible unless you live in here. So, yeah, it's kind of nice. Uh, nothing really else to see. Yeah, of course, you also have your own companies. You have the Modern Military Academy and the Parma Arsenal. Uh, and then you also have, uh, you know, Auto Costruzione Ferrari, which is a company in Modena. Then you have the Officina Meccanica Reggiane. Uh, Reggio Emilia is a, like a tiny little town between Parma and Modena. And the Reggiane, of course, is there because Reggiano means from Reggio. And there they mostly produced, actually, aircraft, which you can see in Reggiane Aeronautica. Uh, you can even see, like, the factory still today. It's kind of, like, abandoned. It's not, it doesn't exist anymore as a company. Uh, it's kind of like, abandoned. And the warehouse, you can see it from, like, the train station once you get to the, to the town or whatever. Uh, and then you can also have Ferrari aircraft. Uh, you have the University of Parma as a uh, little company as well. And then you have your own little government people. One of them, actually, your head of government can be Enzo Ferrari, which is hilarious. Uh, Enzo Ferrari is, of course, the founder of the Ferrari company. And uh, he's a corporate suit because, well, he's the founder of a company, <laughs> which is kind of hilarious. And yeah, uh, he's there. He's cool. Famously kind of a dick. And uh, pretty revered around here, of course, because, I mean, like, he made something famous. It's like, whatever. Uh, then we tag over to Lombardy. Lombardy is also kind of interesting. They've got the whole theme of reestablishing Lombardy. So, of course, like, uh, they're actually headed by a Visconti, who were the ruling family in Milan before the Ambrosian Republic uh, kind of destroyed them, and before the Sforza, a family of essentially mercenaries, took over the Republic in return and established their own duchy of uh, Milan. But in this, it's called uh, Lombardia, which means Lombardy. It's this region instead of Milano. Uh, and of course, this is all about like making Northern Italy great again or whatever. Uh, so got some great icons, by the way, uh, and some very, very good modifiers. Again, a very, very common theme of all these focus trees is that they have extremely strong modifiers because these are very small, concentrated little uh, little governments like they don't have much to handle so what they can handle they can handle efficiently but again it's like a bunch of separate separated little entities so unless they're uh, well I guess uh, taken together they're gonna be worthless all those modifiers are gonna be pretty worthless and you have the option of either making a strong absolute monarchy or a universal suffrage constitutional monarchy uh, in this regard you're going to have either the conservatives or the, I think, paternal autocrats. Yes, paternal autocrats be in uh, in power. And, of course, the... <laughs> oh, God, this actually... Mm. Yeah, this might be... Uh -uh. Might be a reference to something. Anyway. Uh, in the end, you can request the return of the Lombard crown, which is, um, you know... Uh, the Lombard crown is like the crown of the Holy Roman Emperor. And right now, of course, it is in Vienna because, well, I mean, this guy's not the Holy Roman Emperor anymore, but he's inheriting that legacy. And then if you get the crown back, you get the coronation of the King of Lombardy. I'm not sure what exactly this would do because I haven't, again, played Lombardy, but hey, it's nice that you can do that. And then uh, you do some glorious stuff for your economy and for your army. Drill the troops into shape. Uh, you can actually hire drill instructors. Huh. Well, I wish that I had time to see what this event was about, but probably, you know, do you want to hire Austrians or do you want to hire, I don't know, Sicilians or whatever? 
To make up for the small size of our armed forces, our green units must be as prepared for war as possible. To accomplish this, we must hire new drill instructors. Yeah, it's probably like, I don't know, do you want Austrians, Germans, French, or like, you know, two Sicilies, whatever. That's, that's the usual stuff. And then you have the last one, which is Venice. And uh, Venice is actually quite interesting because uh, their focus tree is the only one that's not really meant to be a puppet focus tree because if we go back to doo -doo -doo, exit to menu, we go back to the Italian Republic, they uh, they can essentially cause Venice to break off in another way. And it's so complicated, this new Italy stuff, but I like it. Da -da -da, finding land war in Asia, all of that. Okay, new game. So, the Italian Republic. Alright. So, the Italian Republic, as you saw, has different constitutional options for what it can become. You can either uh, save the Republic and become the Italian Republic, stable democracy. You can restore the monarchy, or rather, you can have the Austrians restore the monarchy for you, which you saw in the earlier outcome. Or you can have the Anuses in power. If you have the Anuses in power, uh, after essentially the whole 1936 political struggle, you can end up coming down and uh, you ha you're going to have an event, right? Uh, if you have the anuses in power, you're going to have an event where you can uh, resend essentially the autonomous status of Veneto. Uh, even today, Veneto has some like autonomous, uh, like powers within the framework of the centralized again it's not supposed to be a federal today the italian republic but it does have some regions that have autonomous uh, statutes for example valle d'aosta up here uh, because they're french <laughs> essentially uh then tyrol because they're germans and then sardinia sicily like all these are autonomous statute regions they've got some like special laws and special fiscal statuses with the anuses you're supposed to be creating this ultra centralized legionary italy so they take away venice's uh, you know like old rights or whatever and they revolt and they break free and it's kind of nice because of that da -da -da. tag back over to the sicilians you've seen me do this like seven million times so at this point you're probably very Tired of it, but yeah, let's go back. And now we're gonna recreate the Italian Federation as usual. Form the Italian Federation. Yes, Sardinia accepts as usual. Let's tag over to Venice. Venice is, of course, the heir of the old Serene Republic of Venice. Now, they've got uh, <laughs> actually their uh, National Populist Party is an integralist party, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, which was La? What does La even mean? And I just want to check out Modena's political parties if I've missed anything. Guardia Emiliana, so the Emilian Guard. Nah, eh, sure, whatever. Pretty boring. So tagging back over to Venice, we can see that. I mean, they've got their own unique politics and all that. They've got a few more, uh, a few more like ministers and such, because of course, like they're. A little bit like the least uh, rump state of them all. Uh, is this guy? I think I know this guy, but can't remember. Can't remember why. And yeah, they've got their own ministers, all of that. Just trying to see if I remember any of these characters from. Uh, no, I, don't, I mean whatever. Da -da -da. Then you have your own you know, Venice Military Academy, Verona Arsenal. Olympia. I don't remember what this is supposed to be. Anyway, uh, Padua Industrial Concern. Of course, more options for naval manufacturers because it's Venice. I mean, come on. Uh, you have the Venice Arsenal that you can re-establish. It's glorious cruiser manufacturing. Uh, then other types of shipyards. The Venice Military Academy or Naval Academy. Then you have Sade and the University of Verona. You also, of course, have your own uh, little advisors. And your focus tree is a little bit more focused, as you may expect, on the Navy, because Venice is glorious. 
can even proclaim the Thalassocracy in the end, uh, which is supposed to be like uh, the domination of the sea. Uh, well, it used to be of the Mediterranean by one naval power, which again it was supposed to be Venice, but there's there would be people that would dispute that claim. Uh, again, Italy, kind of derpy. And you have great bonuses to your navy. What's kind of funny at the start is that Venice, who's supposed to be the strongest of the naval powers, one, doesn't start with a fleet. Like, for some reason, you don't have the Italian Republic's fleet. And second of all, uh, like, you don't have any dockyards <laughs> to build a fleet. So at the start, you're going to have to, well, get yourself some dockyards. You know, if you're going to play as Venice... You should probably like, I don't know, uh, like make an event that gives you the Italian Republic's fleet. That's one of the things that I really dislike about Hearts of Iron 4 is that you don't get the fleets of defeated enemies. Because this is like how it worked, right? Like you could maybe make it so it's at the price of negative modifiers to your economy like the Australasians, you know, they have an oversized fleet or whatever. So they have a modifier, that's bad. Uh, but you should be able to take over the defeated fleets of your enemies. Like it's just basic you know if you've defeated a country just take their ships it's not like it's not like because they're in other countries they don't work or whatever uh then um, you have a tiny little army tree as you'd expect nothing really too flavorful you do have a aviation stuff uh which um seems to be buggy because the Ven venetia aviation industry is actually for destroyers and convoys so, huh. I feel like that's supposed to be, yep, they, they, they seem to have had a bit of a bug from Life at Sea. Okay, never mind. Never mind for them. So that's a, that's nasty. You can get 40% convoy production cost. And I mean, the stories are retardedly bad, but oh well, that's better than nothing. You get some airfields, and you can be more offensive or more defensive, whatever. That's what you'd expect. Uh, and of course, the naval air arm is a little bit more important. You get some free fighters and free naval bombers. Good, not bad. Uh, and then you have your uh, sort of political and economy things are a little bit more intertwined because, again, like, this is a re uh, an oligarchical republic, right? So let's actually start to focus and um, see how it works because... What you're supposed to be deciding is if you're going to be a uh, modern democratic republic. Buddy Kerensky. Stop getting assassinated. And of course, all these guys have high popularities because, I don't know, whatever. People like to be ruled locally, I guess. And, um, like, the Grand Council, which is uh, the Gran Consiglio, is uh, the old, like, ruling body of uh, Venice, which was supposed to be essentially concentrating and uh, representing the interests of all the major patrician families. And, uh, you know, uh, you can either re rekindle this old republic and be more conservative and have more bonuses to your stability, to more, uh, like, political power and stuff, or you can have a new republic, which is a meritocratic uh, modern state or whatever, and that gives you the Venetian welfare, which gives you a little bit more economical bonuses. And then uh, you have your own little, wow, even more. I feel like this is uh, this is a little buggy. Uh, supposed to be something else, but yeah, apparently yet more destroyer and trade convoy uh, production reductions, and you can get some pretty good, lovely uh, bonuses can build some arsenals, can build some centers of trade, and then have an economic miracle. Because, uh, you know, northeastern Italy, still today, is one of the most rich regions, along with, uh, you know, Emilia and Lombardy. Like, this whole belt is just very, very rich, very, very industrialized, so that's what you'd expect. So, once you come in... Huh. Of course, you can't actually choose a... A prime minister. I think that's going to happen after we take the session of the Great Council. Uh, da -da, come on. Come on. Good. So first session of the Great Council. Again, this is... Uh, when it goes over into the foreign policy line, you will see why this is more supposed to be for the independent Venice. So for the first time in over 100 years, the Great Council of Venice convenes once more. 
Members from across the Republic gather in Venice to discuss how the Venetian Republic should be restored. Already two camps have emerged, blah blah blah. You've seen this already. Come on, come on events. Don't take forever to fire. I want to get over this. <laughs> so this is, after I'm done with this, I'm gonna end the video, of course. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So action and term of the, yes, the doge, uh, uh, which we actually say doge. I mean, I'm not sure what the Venetians would say, because again, like Italian pronunciation and Venetian pronunciation might be different. Uh, the first question that come up was the election of the Doge. In the Old Republic, it was elected for life, but uh, by the Great Council, by choosing 30 members from a random lot, who would then be reduced by nine, by a random lot. Those nine would name 40 members whom they have to be approved, but blah, 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 blah. It was a complicated as fuck system, okay? It was complicated as hell. And then eventually they would choose it. This is supposed to be because like the doge is um, essentially like for life, right? So the old method gives the doge rule for life because he's supposed to be like, you know, the stabilizing force of the politics, but he's not the real power behind the Republic. The real power was the Major Consiglio, the Gran Consiglio. And um, behind that, were the major patrician families, okay? So this was how the oligarchy worked. So you can either say, eh, it's directly elected, or the old, old method. Just for shits and giggles, we're gonna take the old method and rule for life. Average popularity, fine. Franchise and the Great Council. So the next question is how to franchise the council shall be determined. Those arguing for an old republic seek a weighted system where wealth and prosperity hold importance and more votes because again, it was an oligarchical, um, essentially kleptocratic republic. Uh, while those arguing for new modernized republics believe that equal franchise for all Venetians shall be the law of the day. I wonder if we make a full hybrid system, what happens? Probably just a Frankenstein. State inquisitors. In the old republic, one of the ways that it remained so serene was due to the efforts of the Council of Ten and the state inquisitors. Some seek to restore the state inquisitors to power and let them have the secret police powers that they used to have, while others think that there is uh, no need for that in a modern republic. Mm. I do like political power. So as you can see, there's a few events that fire, and it's kind of interesting. So what ends up happening after you finish this, I'm going to go over this already, is that you can choose down your foreign policy stuff, uh, and then... Of course, take a side, side with Germany, side with Austria, side with the Entente. Side with Austria, you know, seems kind of weird. Uh, this can only happen, by the way, if you're fully independent, of course. Side with Austria seems kind of weird because your the rest of your policy stuff ends up, like, trying to reclaim Austrian things. Like, <laughs> because right now, of course, Trieste, Istria, and Dalmatia, which are, well... Trieste is this one, Trieste. Istria is this peninsula over here, Küstenland. And then Dalmatia is this coastline area. Uh, Lika and Dalmatia, which are Illyria right now. Uh, I mean, they're all Austrian, so it's kind of weird. Yeah, Trieste owned by the Austrian. Oh, this is also kind of... Uh, yeah, this is also kind of bugged because it says that Dalmatia needs to be owned by the Austrian Empire. Dalmatia needs to be owned by the Austrian Empire and not the Austrian Empire or a subject of the Austrian Empire, aka Illyria. Come on! Taking forever to debate or whatever. Uh, it seems to be... Oh, come on. Just... I'm gonna do... Focus dots... No restrictions. Something like that. Oh, come on. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look into the thing again. So, Hearts of Iron 4 console commands. Should probably skip ahead a few seconds just to avoid me looking at the console commands. Da -da -da. Occupation painting. Focus dot no checks and ignore prerequisites. So 
Okay. More prerequisites. Alright. What the fuck? Okay, good. Let's also do autocomplete. So, establishing Stato da Mar. Uh, during the old days of the Old Republic, the whole Eastern Mediterranean was under our dominion. The coast of the Adriatic, the Adriatic were home to our ports and the dockyards, and this was our Stato da Mar, or uh, like sea state. Uh, now, however, that is no longer the, the case. Uh, the Great Council has thus approved of a plan to establish a policy of how we should get some of the territory that used to be ours back then. The guys, right? Like, syntaxis is always just so, so weird. Anyway, uh, that's good. And then, policy towards Istria. Hold on. Let's, um, let's disable that again. Because focus dot, um, no requirements. Dot. Auto complete. Oh, come on. Ignore prerequisites, sorry. Because they don't want the AI lagging the game out. Couldn't they have. Okay, couldn't they have made like a slightly less retarded thing? Anyway, come on. It should give us an event, or it should give Austria an event or something. It's not doing so, though. Which is kind of sad. Come on, give me the events. That's one thing I always dislike about like doing this with console commands is that it really likes to bug out the game, but if not, we have to just wait a, an hour or something for everything. Come on, Mosley elected chairman. Okay, the plebiscite fails. Okay, so, right, so you actually have plebiscites to happen. Okay, so... Uh, you have a plebiscite, I mean, favorite nationalist hobby of uh, the early 20th century and late 19th century. To have plebiscites and lands to decide, you know, if they're gonna be if they're gonna be yours or not. So, great day for Venice, yay! And you get Pola renamed uh, from Kustenland to Pola. Pola is like a port that's here. And then, the plebiscite fails. Then war it is! Uh, you... Okay, so... You don't actually declare war, you just gain a claim. Wait, but you gain a claim on Pola. And not on Trieste. Okay, seems to be buggy as well. Anyway, that's a... Uh... Okay, no, 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 okay, so both happened, what the fuck? Somehow both happened. I have no idea how. Probably because, again, I used console commands for things to happen. It's always like a, you know, it's always something. You know, another thing that's kind of retarded is how Take a Side does not give any bonuses or malices in its 70 days. I mean, it's like, yeah, you're gonna get an alliance, which, I mean, alliances are great. Uh, and thematically, I feel like the Venice uh, is supposed to, like, belong to the Entente, because the Entente, if you think about it, it's just a lot of naval powers, you know? So, Venice being sort of like their northern Mediterranean outpost, I feel like makes some sense. Look at that, Milan already training an infantry division. Go down them. And you also get some free dockyards, yay. Right, because we built that dockyard. Damn, we actually have some industry and a half. Yeah, we do. Come on, trade policy, or sorry, trust the policy. Let's see if this is gonna succeed. I wonder if there's like a heavier chance or, an, or not, depending on things. And what I want to see, actually, by waiting for this, is if uh, now it's going to, you know, actually declare war on the Austrians if this fails or not. I wonder. Come on, Trieste policy. Come on, Trieste policy. Right? We have that. Give me. Give me a vent. Trieste is ours. Or whatever. And right now, it's actually kind of a funny situation, because Trieste is completely cut off from, like, Austria itself. So it's kind of an exclave. Oh my god, these events are killing me. These events are killing me. Yeah, sure. Weird things are happening everywhere else. Come on, Serene Republic of Venice. Give me the end of this. Yeah. 
Uh, seems like it's not happening. Oh well, that is uh, okay. Just I'm just gonna end it for now, I guess. Uh, is this actually your core? Yes, it is your core. Good. So you actually get cores on these things. That's not bad. It's not bad one bit. I wonder if this is going to... This is just about Dalmatia, so it's actually not about Lika here. Uh, also known as Rieka or Fiume, which was a favorite uh, pass, uh, uh, favorite holiday resort for Italian nationalists in the 20s, I hear. Anyway, this is going to be the end of the video. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this breakdown of the Italian uh, you know, explosion in Kaiserreich. Uh, and yeah, uh, stay tuned for, for more guides about uh, Garibaldi's Nightmare and 0 0.6 and all that. Uh, is it 0 0.7 already? No, it's 0 0.6, right? I, I don't even know the name of the patch. Who gives a shit? Uh, so yeah, have a good day, and I'll see you soon. I hope. <laughs>